and during rush hour, my then seven-year-old kiddo waited patiently for the pedestrian light to turn on in front of my representative and my senator. The little white glowing figure of a stick indicated that it was safe for her to cross the street. And when the light came on for her, she pushed her bike into the intersection to cross, but then realized a little too late when the wall of cars came speeding toward her that the pedestrian light that she was looking at was actually facing 90 degrees the wrong way. And now she and her bike are standing in a crosswalk and there was nothing we adults could do. She pushed her bike back and hit the curb because there was no cutout, which is, according to the Americans with Disabilities Act, something we have discussed twice on this show in very recent history, required for wheelchairs, strollers, crutches, scooters, and kids too small to carry their big kid bike up the six inch of curb that should have had a cutout. So there she was, standing like a deer in the oncoming daytime running lights as a wave of rush hour cars came around the corner and she couldn't move. The senator looked on, the representative looked on, and all I could do was scream. And luckily, one of the front cars saw a third grader with a ridiculous unicorn helmet in the bright teal mane meant to keep her safe from a fall but probably saved her life that day because what would you think if you saw that as a driver? And while the wave of cars started honking like the mass holes they were at this driver who thankfully wasn't distracted, who wasn't texting and driving, unlike the dozens we saw earlier on our walk, this driver was paying attention and stopped. The car next to her also stopped a few feet before hitting my kid in a crosswalk feet from where my friend was killed because it is not safe to cross here. We were luckier than my daughter's classmate who was struck the year before heading home from school in the same area. She survived. She's fine. But she was very hurt and her mom, like me, couldn't do anything in the moment. And the nightmares that keep them both awake at night are heartbreaking. Accidents can happen in the blink of the eye and can change everything. So we're having a rally to the lives of the people in our city in the last two years who have been hit by cars, nearly all of them on this small stretch of highway. The only way we can access our city that has been cut up and carved out and separated from all resources, benefits to being in a city, public services, schools, all of it. What's the point of being in a city if you have to drive? Walking is the point. And you cannot hear. In the densest populated city in all of New England, and it's not Boston. It's Somerville, my home city, the town next door to the big mama Boston. We can have a rally with politicians and media and a city showing up and kids and survivors. We have the internet. We have Reddit threads. We have lawmakers who want to change something or get reelected or maybe both, maybe not. Lawmakers and lobbyists who will get in the way and obstruct for obstruction's sake or for money's sake, for Pete's sake. We have a podcast where maybe a hundred people will hear about it this week. But... We can at least try to do something by using our voices, and often it works if there's enough attention. If only someone in charge cares enough to force something to happen and cut through the red tape. (coughs) Governor. (coughs) And yet, this is remarkably similar to the stories in recent history about animals crossing the highways, throughways, byways, parkways, all the ways that we have sliced and diced and cut up their homes, their habitats, their access to food, which is getting scarcer, and access to water, which is getting polluteder, and they have less and less usable land to be free. So to get over there, on the other side of the street, they can't have a rally, they can't push a pedestrian crossing sign, even if it's facing the right direction. They are at our mercy. 